Hi, um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, sand filters today because they are the cheapest way of um, outputting or producing drinking water. They're also easy to maintain. They don't take too much space and they're just awesome. Um, they are, they can filter all sorts of particles from water uh, and also all sorts of bacteria, virus and other microorganisms to an astonishing degree if taken care of properly. The only, their major limitation though is that they cannot filter chemicals. They cannot filter heavy metals. So lead, arsenic, bleach, any other chemical or metal that goes through this filter is not going to be filtered out of the water. Um, if you are using water that comes from snow melt or from rain, rain catchment, then that water is going to be perfectly um, uh, uh, adequate for uh, using in set with sand filters. The way they work, their main, main component is sand uh, and most of the filtration, some of it happens in the sand, but most of it happens right on top of the sand. Uh, on, on the, this is called the biolayer. On the biolayer, there is a little ecosystem that establishes uh, basically microorganisms that live on the surface of the sand that eat, um, predate on the um, virus, bacteria, other microorganisms that live or that, that live or come with the, um, the water that you want to filter. So, filtration processes of sand filters, we already seen predation. Another one is trapping. Uh, this one happens in the bulk of the sand. So basically, uh, all sorts of particles and microorganisms get trapped in the spaces between the grains, the grains of sand because they're too big to continue flowing. So that's trapping. Uh, there's another filtration process that's absorption. There's basically electromagnetic forces and van der Waals forces that occur at the molecular level that um, attract these particles and microorganisms to the grains of sand so that, and they're so strong that they can't release themselves and they just die like that. That's for absorption. And finally, we have natural death. Some of these microorganisms, as they run through uh, the 20 gallons of sand or more um, that, that exist in the filter, they run out of food and they have no oxygen, so they end up dying even if they don't get filtered through any other, other of these processes. That's for natural death. Basically, the way that the sand filter works is all gravitational. Um, you have a big drum, and on top of it, you have a disperser, um, dispersing bucket that basically protects the, the bio layer. So you input the water through that dispersing bucket, and that, the, then that water travels through the sand into some PVC piping that we're, I'm going to explain later and then outflows gravitationally. Uh, so the materials that you will need for this are a drum that is at least 30 inches tall. You will need about 10 feet of PVC pipe. That's, that's the, the length they come in. Um, I usually use a half inch you can even use smaller, but half inch PVC will do. You will have, you will need a small bucket and a lid for the, for, as a dispersing bucket. And these are the, the drums that we usually use. They're food grade and we just cut a hole through the top. And then you will need two PVC caps you will need one T, so the caps, one T, four elbows, 90 degree elbows, and they have to, of course, be fittings that uh, fit on the size of PVC that you choose, and two male adapters, right, right here, 
you'll need one bulkhead, which I don't have right here to show you. But this is all, these are all parts that you can find in a hardware store. Then you will need, of course, sand, you'll need some gravel, and you need some aluminum window screen. I, no, screen. I tend to prefer uh, metal to plastic, just because it won't decompose, it won't rot, um, it will not leach into your sand, into your, into your water. So, first thing first, you get your dispersing bucket and you punch many small holes, or you drill many small holes through it. And it has to be small so as to protect the ecosystem that goes inside the big drum. After that, you punch a hole through the big drum and you have to be careful it has to be the size of the bulkhead fitting. And then you start gluing PVC together. And how does that work? Basically, let's think about the bottom first. It's, there's a, a top view here of this side, uh, side uh, view here. So this is how it's going to look. These are about 12 inch long pieces of PVC. They're capped on one end with one of these caps. And then there's an elbow glued to the other end. Then there's an about two inch, two inch long piece of PVC. And then you glue the T to it. And you simulate the other side, you'll do exactly the same thing. Okay, and then on top of the, P the, the T, you're going to add a piece of PVC pipe that's 20 inch long, right here. Or 25, rather, I'm sorry. So this is going to be this piece right here. Now, the only thing is that you need to open or drill some holes at the bottom here so that the water can flow. And this is how it looks like. Basically, you'll drill some holes in this kind of pattern so that the water gets absorbed from the sand into the piping. So then you glue all the parts together. There's this big 20 and 25 inch PVC pipe or, or bigger depending on the size of your drum. You'll have to adapt these measurements a little bit. Then there's an elbow, another two inch piece, the male adapter, um, bulkhead, another male adapter, another two inch piece, and another elbow. So the next step, once you have all of this together, is cleaning the gravel, preparing the window screen, and cleaning the sand. You clean the gravel basically by dumping it in water and keep cleaning it until you get, and, and replacing the water until you get clear water. And you only need about one inch thick thickness of gravel so not not a lot then you cut a piece of the window screen to size just to prevent the sand from leaking and, and filling in the pores between the gravel rocks uh, so you can cut it and put it on top of the gravel and then it's the, the fun part you have to clean the sand and you basically get an old pillowcase Put a couple of scoops of sand in it, then dip everything in water. And do this a couple of times until most of the mud and particles have left the sand. The way to tell if the sand is clean enough uh, to, to be put into the filter is by doing a jar test. And that is, um, you put a little bit of sand into a bowl jar, then you add water. You close it and you shake it. If 30 seconds later, you can see a distinction line between the sand and the water, um, your sand is good enough. The water does not have to be clear. So that's it. Then you keep cleaning sand until you have the, the correct amount of sand in your filter. And that is it. It's basically good to go. Uh, this filter has a slow output. And what you should do is keep pouring water through it every day for about a month, um, just to establish that ecosystem. And um, after 30 days, you can start drinking the water. Um, 
So if that output starts slowing down, that means that your bio layer right on top of the sand is getting too thick and preventing the flow of water. Uh, and that can be usually months. What happens in that case is um, with, a, with a spoon or a fork or something, you lift the dispersing bucket and just um, disturb the, the first couple of inches of sand. And then you wait for about five to 10 days and you can start or keep pouring water every day, but don't drink it. And five to 10 days later, you can start drinking the water again that comes out of the filter. And that's basically it as for maintenance of the filter, functioning of the filter. The other, uh, one other thing that I have to say is this a filter this size with these drums we use in this area, we will feed or will provide enough drinking water for a family of four easily on a daily basis. And that's it. These are very amazing filters. Where we're at, we can build them for about $40 in parts and, and everything. So you can't get much cheaper than that for potable water. Um, just one last thing to mention, there's wonderful organizations that have been doing incredible work to develop, to develop these filters. Uh, and um, cost, for example, which we reference in the comment section below, please take a look at their website. They have an amazing um, amount of information in there on these things. Um, yeah, so, but we still love to use them and I hope that you will have fun with your filter and making it and drinking from it. Thank you, bye.